Hey, good afternoon. Well, today wraps up my trip away, and later this afternoon I'll be heading back home. Uh, and then I'll be getting ready for a move. So uh, this has been a really amazing time um, ever since I left to come here. And uh, just having so much quiet time with the Lord and learning many things. You know, I got to say this. I love the Lord. I was thinking about this on the way over here before I stopped is that the Lord gives us things in bite-sized pieces. It's almost like he'll put a puzzle piece on the table and we may not see the whole picture at that moment of what he's trying to say to us, but he'll give us just a bite size. And then the lesson will go on and continue during the day. And then he'll put another piece there. And, uh, you know, I've come to see the word that he gave me this morning as something uh, much bigger in this sense. Um, I was kind of curious when the Lord gave me what he did this morning, because I'm almost like, did I mess up somewhere along the line? You know, is there something, you know, that I need to confess? Is there something not right? And it really wasn't about that. What the Lord was showing me, and I'm just going to frame it in this. Many people do have this kind of thing happen and many people don't. So this is a part of my story. So over the last five years or so, I had been through labor trafficking in one form, a domestic violence in another, uh, a, a betrayal of someone that I really loved, and then uh, homelessness and um, got my foot wet in some human trafficking. And I, the Lord has been working on me because... I'm just going to be honest here. Here's my thing. I would love it to just be the Lord in me. And I would love just to have a few dogs. And that's it. And I, I didn't really realize. Well, I realized why. But I guess the Lord's just bringing it up on the table um, for me. Is that being reintegrated into relationships again. Into community. Whatever that looks like. Wherever. It makes me take a deep breath. And I want to kind of take a step back. And it isn't because of people necessarily, but the things that happen between people in relationships. And relationships are great. And I love it. And I love family. I love community. I love all of that. But sometimes it's um, it can be hard. It can be difficult when we don't know quite how we fit into the picture or how to fit. When you go through the last five years in my own story, as much as I have, um, you might, you might to a point run in and be excited. I've always been very extroverted. I've always been, uh, in hospitality ministry. I love people and I still do, but going through what I have the last five years has made me really question a lot of things and, go through a lot of things. So I've had to take a step back when it comes to relationships. I'm very, uh, I go in kind of on the low side and I do a lot of listening and have a lot of, I hope, discernment from the Lord. That can be a challenge too, because sometimes our discernment, what we think is our discernment is not. It can be a trigger or a lie the enemy puts in your mind. So I guess what I'm trying to say in this season, I'm having to relearn relationships. You know, what makes it difficult to, in this day and age that we live in, is you hear a lot of people talk about being a lone wolf or being an island. And I even said it myself. Sometimes that's easier, but is it really? Because I think we end up being in a prison alone or behind walls that are very high and very thick. And while we think we're safe, we're really in there by ourselves. I know the Lord is with us, but the Lord made us for relationships and for community. And yes, there's a time that the Lord will take us away for a while just to be with him on our own. I know that's so. He did it with Paul. He did it with John the Baptist. He's done it in my life several times. But it's not a way that we remain. The Word of God says that He wants us to fellowship and be in community with one another. He made families for a purpose. But I'm saying when we experience times that are like I mentioned in my own life, it can mess you up a little bit as far as relationships, especially when it happens in 
succession. So it's time to sometimes go to counseling, which I've done, and uh, it's time to just be with the Lord and begin again. Show me how to do this again. Show me how to be now after everything that's happened. You know, I realized over the last uh, few days, too, in different situations, the Lord orders your steps. And in the situations I was in, I could see where those tender spots were that I was feeling. It had nothing to do with anyone around me. It just had to do with what was in me. And that's what the Lord was talking about this morning. It doesn't necessarily have to be a sin thing. It doesn't necessarily have to be a negative thing. It just comes as the Lord putting his finger on us and saying, listen, this is an issue and there may be sin that causes it, or this is an issue and there may be some brokenness that causes it. But the thing is, is we have to really just go through these kinds of times, I think a little slower and listening a little more for the Lord, spending time with him, spending time in his word and going into relationships slowly and asking the Lord to teach us how again. You know, I was uh, coming here and uh, again before I stopped, you know, I was thinking and I was seeing in the spirit like a little, uh, a toddler almost. When the parents help the, the toddler to begin to walk, you know, they might be sitting down and they'll take their hands and they help them to take first steps. And I was thinking, this is first steps again. First steps into relationship. And it's nothing to be afraid of at all. Um, not for me, I'm not really afraid of it, but I'm paying attention and, uh, I'm not going to run away from it, Well, I want, I want it, but I want to learn how to, or relearn, I guess, how to do it God's way in this season. So I don't know. I hope this comes, uh, across to minister somehow to somebody out there today. Maybe you're struggling in relationships. Maybe you've been hurt and wounded or betrayed or, Maybe you're just not sure how to take that first step. You know, we all have our different temperaments. And I find now I'm not really an introvert, though sometimes I'm more of an ambivert. You know, I'm kind of out there with people and I love it. On the outer court, uh, I can be friendly and talk with anyone. When it comes to having that uh, closer relationship, who I let in to see me and uh, let them get to know me on a deeper level, that's something I walk through very uh, carefully now with my eyes wide open. And I think that's smart in the days that we live in. And uh, of course, there's that place where it's just us and God. And I spend a lot of time there because I believe that everything flows from our relationship with Jesus. It really does with the Father, with the Holy Spirit and with his word. And uh, I think when we can begin to say, hey, you know, I really want to do this relationship thing, God, I just need you to walk me through it and teach me how again and be honest. You know, I, I shed a few tears this morning because I really needed to tell God how I felt. And I'm learning that I need to tell the people around me that I can trust how I feel about something too. And uh, it has nothing to do with them. It just has to do with what's in me. And it's something that has to be rebuilt. And you know, when God rebuilds things, he rebuilds them strong. For he says in his word that out of weaknesses we're made strong. So anyway, it's going to be an adventure. And I do want to mention one thing uh, I was thinking about as well uh, came to mind. And I want to put this out there. Uh, Lisa Turkhurst just wrote a new book called um, Lord, I want to trust you, but I don't know how. Something like that. And, you know, it's not that I don't trust God. We're talking about relationships. Lisa Turkhurst has been through so many uh, relationship um, experiences, and she's had to learn in her life in this area to build trust again, too. So I definitely would recommend the book. And she's also, I, I'm not sure if she's the head of Proverbs 31 Ministries, but um, they have what they call Circle Book Club, and they are actually doing a study on the book right now. And I know for me, I don't have a lot of money, and I can't even carry it around with me because I carry around enough. So I went on Amazon Kindle, and it was like $12, and I got the book, and I can follow along.
and they just started it. So if you're in this place and this ministers to you today, I'm glad that I got to share it. And uh, I hope you will, like me, begin to take those first steps again and uh, with an open heart. And remember, we're not really entrusting ourselves to people. Uh, we're entrusting ourselves completely to God and allowing him to surround us with the people in this season of our life that we need. And it actually... Uh, may not look like what we think. We may just want all those people around us that are going to build us up and, you know, are going to be everything we would hope. But, you know, God knows what we need and who we need and for what season we need them. And uh, sometimes it may be a, a tough relationship or it might be a Judas or it might be a Peter. And I know we don't want to hear that. But, you know, sometimes the, the least uh, likely person we would want is actually who we need. As a matter of fact, I got to throw this out too. I'm finding that that scripture out of weaknesses were made strong. I'm finding that in my weakest moments when I'm going, God, please don't let this happen like this, or please don't let this, he will let it happen. It's the very medicine that we need, the trial that we don't want. Yeah. And he's given me this, um, remembrance of what Job said, the very thing I feared came upon me. And I'm going to tell you, God has done that. And I think, uh, actually, now that I look at it, he's had me actually pray certain prayers for things not to happen. And then immediately they do. And, uh, before I can say I attributed it to the enemy and now I don't because I realize that where I'm most afraid where my uncertainties doubts and anxieties uh lie the most uh or lay the most that that's the exact experience I need to learn the lessons in the situation that I need to be made stronger through it so anyway I hope you have a great afternoon I have to get back and pack and head back home so I will talk to you next time have a great afternoon, and if I don't talk to you again, have a great evening. And remember, you're very loved, and it's okay to be just who we are where we're at. We're no different. Everybody's broken in different parts of their life, and uh, Jesus is the one that pours himself in as the gold and puts us back together. Have a great day.